Let's continue our section on pressure control valves. We're going to take a look at the pressure control valve in front of us here, and it is a pilot operated relief valve. And so let's look at the ports first. This would be where our system is passing through. So we have to remember that a relief valve is always plumbed. Uh, so it would be draining into a parallel leg or an alternate leg. So our pump flow could be on one side, our system load could be on the other, and this would be our drain port that goes back to tank. So what we see is as our pump creates the flow, the system creates the restriction, that pressure is going to build up in this cavity. What we need to see here is that there is a small hole that goes through this piston right here. We can see the little hole right there. It's very small. And what that means is that the pressure in this cavity is going to be equal to the pressure in this cavity here. Another thing that we need to see that's missing on this cutaway is that in the top section of this housing where we're not able to see, there's a passageway that's going to lead that pressurized oil up into this pocket. So what I'm saying is that the pressure here would end up being the pressure here. That's going to end up being the pressure here. And that's going to be for a moment anytime we're sort of operating. So let's say this uh, relief valve is set at 2,000 PSI. The load is at 1,200. There's going to be 1,200 here. There's going to be 1,200 in here. And there's going to be 1,200 up here. Now, the way a pilot operator relief works is that there is a second valve, that's this upper valve here, that's the pilot valve, that is actually used to open at the predetermined pressure. And so what this allows us to do is have a smaller pressure override. If I had a large 3000 PSI valve, I would have a really large spring holding that spool closed. And what that does is it means that as I move up, at 2500 the valve is already starting to lift so that it can be fully open at 3000 the way we normally set our relief valves our system reliefs are set at fully open that would be the pressure we're looking for rather than cracking so it starts cracking at 2500 fully open at 3000 that would be a, a traditional direct acting relief valve and so the problem with that is if you were trying to lift in a loader frame and you were trying to carry the material that let's say 2,800 PSI created the load in the bucket creates 2,800 on the cylinders, what you would actually notice is since the relief valve is cracking, it would actually drift to the, to the ground, it would drift down. And so we actually want to have a really small pressure override so that it starts to crack at, let's say, 2,950 if it's going to open at 3,000 fully open. And so the way we do that is we allow the system pressure to be in here act on both sides of this piston. And so if it's acting on both sides of the piston, the piston doesn't really move. And then let's say at 2950, so we're gonna say we set this valve at 3000. We change that number a little bit just to explain it. Set the valve at 3000 at fully open. This poppet lifts up and we drain out. All of our pump oil would end up going out through our drain back to tank. So the way to do that is at 2950, what'll happen is we'd have 2950 on this side, 2950 over here, 2950 over here, and that 2950 will be what's required that when that pressure acts against this little triangle-shaped piston, so when it acts against there, it opens up this smaller spring. When it opens up this spring, pulling this poppet back, what actually happens is the oil that leaks past is able to travel down through and this spool is actually hollow until it gets to this portion right over here. And so then that pilot oil, when it leaks past this seat at 2950, it's able to come down. So at 2950, this valve is open, but this valve will still not move because it's got a 50 PSI spring right here. And this is the pressure override spring. So let's say that pressure override springs 50. So I got 2950 here, 2950 here, 2950 here, and this has opened it up. But it's when my system pressure is now going to increase to 3000 that this plunger is able to actually lift up and compress the 50 psi pressure override spring and the reason why it's able to do that is the 2950 that's on the top side of this piston that was holding it in its neutral position is now being drained out past this open valve through the center and so the 3000 that's built over here is not able to get over here and act as 3000 because it's being drained through this top valve. So what we get then is a 3000 PSI in our system, we get 2950 on the top side of this piston and we get a 50 PSI difference and that 50 PSI difference 
allows this pilot operator relief to open. And since it's only a 50 PSI difference that goes from fully closed to fully open, we see a pressure override of only 50. And so the benefit then of a pilot operator relief is that we are really only getting a very small pressure override. Now, this one is adjustable. It's not adjustable in this main spool here. It's actually adjustable by the spring tension we put on the pilot valve. And so then this really is two poppets. One is an, uh, an adjustable poppet. The other one is a fixed poppet. And so as we turn this valve in, what we'll see is we're compressing the spring. We're increasing the tension, therefore increasing the pressure. As we move this back open, we re release that spring tension and we reduce the pressure. Again, you have to remember that the relief valve is set with the full flow position going through. So I've stroked the directional control valve. I sent all my pump flow to my load and I set this valve with full flow that I send all of my oil to tank at 3000 PSI. So then we don't really have to worry about how big this override spring is because all we're looking is that we send all of our flow to tank at the 3000 PSI that is set by changing the pilot valve up in this top side here. So again, there is a small passageway if we're getting stuck and you're trying to figure out, well, how did the oil get from the main side to the other side of the piston? That's that small orifice right there. And that orifice is limited in size so that when we have the volume that's moving through the pilot valve is equal to that volume that gets through here. And therefore, we will never get the 3000 PSI on this side and we will allow the 50 PSI compensator or uh, pressure override spring, sorry, to be able to be squished and lifted up. I would not be able to do this with my fingers if this was the full 3000 PSI pressure spring that I was trying to overcome. That would be impossible. And so as I lift it up, you can actually see the passageway opens through the bottom of the spool, and that's how that oil will actually get delivered back to tank.